Hello, how are you? This is our nursery rhyme play pack week four. I'm pretty sure we've got Jack and Jill. So we've got the nursery rhyme at the front. You can see my folder's getting pretty thick with all last week's activities. Um, so to start with, we have the cutting patterns. Sorry, should have got that out before. So for this one, we are using our helping hand on this side and my dominant hand is my right hand. Under seven year olds, they may not know, let me just move that out of the way. Um, they may not have a preference. That only becomes an issue after seven or if um, say for when they're writing, they write with one hand, stop in the middle, switch over the pen and start writing with the other hand. That's when you need to go see an OT because they've got issues crossing that midline. So we're working on bilateral coordination. So that's both their hands working together to complete a task. So um, same as using a knife and fork to eat your dinner, uh, ruling up a page, so holding your ruler and then ruling up with the red pen, tying your shoelaces, doing up a zip, those sorts of activities. Yeah, this one's not crossing the midline because this side of the body is not going over to that side. So I've got my helping hand that's going to hold the paper and my dominant hand or my cutting hand has the scissors. And we well, can't really tell for that one. Green for start, red for stop. For this one, you will see that it is my helping hand that moves the paper. So my scissors stay forward in the middle of my body and my helping hand helps the paper move around so that I can keep cutting. So this is a really good one for fine motor skills. Depending on the age of your little one, they may really struggle with some of these patterns here. That's why I put quite a few lines in there. Um, your zigzag one shouldn't be too bad. This one will be quite tricky. For your younger ones, get them paper scissors and with the shorter blade, that'll make it a bit easier as well. All right, you don't need to see me cut all these out, but that's what this one's for. You can print that off again, put it sideways and use them as writing patterns. So tracing over with a pen. Uh, if you put it in your display folder, it'll make it wipe clean. I'm not gonna bother putting it back in because I've started cutting it up anyway. So again, start at the green dot, finish at the red. And this is just getting your little ones ready to start handwriting later with correct letter direction. So two different ways of using that activity. Then we've got, I put a bit of effort into this one, but you'll probably still laugh at the artwork. I tried. So I don't actually design the individual artworks. I change them up to how we need them. Um, change the colors and you know put them all together to get these packs. So we've got our six story cards here for the rhyme Jack and Jill, the first part of the rhyme. Yes. So Jack and Jill went up the hill. So we'll get Jack and Jill first. There you go. Jack and Jill went up the hill. There's a hill. To fetch a pail of water. So there's our pail, which is a bucket. So a bucket of water. <laughs> Look at my Jack. He's a bit special, but hopefully you get the point. Jack fell down and broke his crown, and Jill came tumbling after. Now, a crown isn't literally a crown, it's the head, yes? So he hurt his head, so he would need a bandage. I just didn't have the right artwork, and I, I went for the literal deliberately for this one. So, Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown, and Jill came tumbling after. So we're putting pictures to the rhyme, we're sequencing it in order, and then retelling it. Yes? I like that one. Um, you can Velcro that one if you choose to. Um, I've given you the background page if you want to Velcro it. Otherwise, um, just do it on the table as you sing the rhyme. Now this one. I'm going to try a different idea for this one. Take the ages to get the paper out. There we go. So I'm going to move my folder. Um, because my folder's so fat, I would normally do it in there and then wipe it clean, but yeah, it's just too fat at the moment. So I'm going to do it straight onto the paper. Now, my brilliant idea, sticky tape. I'm sick of washing out um, trays of paint all the time. So I'm going to stick that there. You can see that there. I'm going to put my paint in it. So for this activity, we are filling up the dots. You can use your finger, you can use a stamper, paintbrush, end of a pen, whatever you want. I'm gonna use this one. So I think I got four different ones for a few dollars. All right, that's gonna be really big for my dots, but I'll end up with a full bucket, yeah? So I'm going to dot my dots. One, two, 
three, four, five. So obviously I'm counting at the same time. This actually works quite well. Uh, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, until my dots get a bit too close. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now, if 20 is too far to count, you could count in fives and then start again every time you filled up five. Completely up to you. What did I just count to? 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. There you go. So it will work counting in fives. Uh, for your older ones, you could do that and then say how many groups of five are there. So maybe when you do five, you could stamp one on the side here, do another five, stamp another five. I'll stamp another one, sorry. Um, I just want to make these activities as adaptable for different ages as possible. And that works well, having my patty pan, so I can just chuck that in the bin now and don't have to worry about washing it. Still have to wash this though. So let me chuck this one out. That activity is done and this one's done. This one I wanted to show you and I will keep this on the plastic. So we've got our bucket and it's a counting activity. So we've got our fish, which are numbered. You can use them um, with the numbers or you can just ignore the numbers. That's completely fine. So where's my number two? We can order them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Or we can just count them as is. There's a number of different activities, yes? But the fun part of this one, which I hope will work. So I've given you this to as a template to cut out. We are then going to run just a sheet of laminate through the laminator. So I'll do that now. Um, I'll chuck it on fast forward so you don't have to watch that. Is it going through? Yep, hang on. Okay, so I have my laminated, you can see it's gone clear now, piece of plastic. So we've got the sheet in the display folder. This one is going to be cut out as a bucket shape to go over here so that we can put the fish in the bucket. Yes? So I think I might just try cutting out without drawing it. Should be right, hang on a sec. Okay, so we can throw away this bit. That was only a template. I've now got a bucket shaped clear bit, which I can get the glitter off first. Sticky tape. So I'm going to use that to seal the sides of my bucket that keeps moving. Ah, get off. That'll do there. Ah, it's wrinkly with glitter in there. It's from yesterday's activity. All right, I'll just fold that over the edge there and seal up the bottom of my bucket. There we go. So we've got a plastic, can you see that? Sleeve there. So we can now count the fish as we put them in the bucket. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, oop, nine, ten. There you go. And that is the end of the, oh no, it's not, no, it's not, we've got more. And you just grab them out again. I love that one, that's really cute. Hopefully you um, kids will have fun with that. And the last one is the crown. So I've just printed this onto paper. You could probably print it onto card or just laminate it if you want it to last longer. So that was on the page like that. So that's already been cut out. We are going to staple. Oh, have a staple here. There we go. And do you remember when Hungry Jacks used to give you a crown as a kid? I used to love the crown. There we go. And... I'm going to go get a teddy, so I've actually got something to put the crown on. Hang on. Here we go. I've got an Easter bunny who's going to sit up. Yeah, there we go. So, size the head. Um, if your child has a huge head, like my daughter, just print off two of the sheets and join a third strip together. That should do. So I've sized it there. Let me put that one. Oh, that didn't really make any difference. Staple, staple, staple. And let's spin it around that way. There we go. And you've got a crown. Cute. That's cute. 
I like that. All right, have fun with this pack. Um, I will talk to you soon with a new one. See ya.